Amy the Squirrel is an anthropomorphic squirrel character and the unofficial mascot of the Amiga computers and is created by Eric W. Schwartz. But from what I saw in a Twitter post, she had a little bit of a career history going on. So in this video, I am going to explain what her history was like and how she evolved throughout the years. Her squirrel tale began in the year 1929 when she auditioned at Walt Disney Studios and was optioned to be a replacement to Minnie Mouse. But unfortunately, she was rejected because the producers feared the implications of an interspecies relationship. Which is... pretty weird. Also, by the way, she looks less like a squirrel and more like a fox to me. Between the years 1937 and 1941, she appeared twice as a squirrel extra in Snow White and Bambi. But it left her unfulfilled because she didn't enjoy the simple, drippy over saccharine cuteness of the part. But hey, at least she did listen to a few good Disney songs, am I right? In 1945, she understudied with Tex Avery's Red Hot Riding Hood. This was the part where she learned how to get all the boys. She almost appeared in a short when World War II ended, and the brutal censors descended once again on the film industry. And just when I thought she was going to be Minerva Mink's predecessor, or successor, whichever one's first. In 1953, she then went to Warner Brothers Studios and auditioned for several animated cartoons. But she was narrowly turned down for one part that was later given to Daffy Duck. The result? Chuck Jones's Duck Amuck. The true beauty. I really wish that they would do a Duck Amuck short starring Amy the Squirrel. It would be peak. In 1965, it was a bit of a backslide in her career. She played a number of bit parts in Hanna-Barbera cartoons. She disliked the fact that she had lost nearly everything she strived to gain earlier in her life. It's okay. I feel ya. At least you got to see the two bears! In 1974, it was a dark era where people got unemployed, but who wasn't? Yeah, this part makes no sense. In 1984, work was very hard to find in American animated cartoons, so she trotted off to Japan. She was picked up and appeared in a few of the domestic animated fantasy films. She was impressed with the fact that many Japanese cartoons have as many graphic stuff as American live action films, and loved the Japanese film's detail, artistry, and more. But she hated the cheesy limited animation and the fact that all Japanese cartoons seemed to be drawn the same way. But at least she's drawn different. She's the only one with a tail. Wait, I think there are many Japanese characters with tails. And the job hunt ends here, between the years 1989 to 1990. She met up with cartoonist Eric Schwartz and also became enamored with a computer that was also named Amy. Schwartz was also the first person to draw her the way she wanted to be drawn. She would finally have all the characteristics that she liked in her earlier career. And the rest is history.